This is Stacy Eldridge. Welcome to Captivated. This world vies for our attention in a thousand different ways. But the most important thing, the preeminent thing, the essential thing, is to give our attention to Jesus. Welcome, friends. Stacy here. I am so glad to have this time with you. Oh my goodness, I'm looking forward to today. Wherever you are, I want to read this scripture over you. This is Jesus calling to you. Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse 10. My beloved spoke and said to me, Arise, my darling, my beautiful one, come with me. This is the invitation from the heart of God always to us to come spend time with him. Come sit at his feet. Come spend time in his word. Come set your gaze on him. Because when you do, when I do, when we do, we fall ever more in love with him. That's my prayer for all of us. So today's topic is the captivating retreat, my favorite. We are about to hold what we think is our last captivating event in the United States, the last live one, but that doesn't mean that captivating is over. We are dreaming and planning for the future of what God has for next spring, and we'll fill you in on that when we have more information. But you may or may not know that the four-day captivating retreat is available online for you to host your own. It's available at our website, and it's free. It's literally the retreat from Thursday evening through Sunday at noon, all of the sessions, the film clips embedded in, and I want to encourage you to check that out. So whether that's a gathering for a few women in your home or an Airbnb or a larger gathering at your church or at a conference center, you can put it on. You facilitate it. There have been over 200 of these held around the world, and they are amazing. They're called Captivating Core, and we're going to be updating the version of the retreat as we film this upcoming one. Um, That'll come out sometime in the fall. But it's available now from a previous retreat, and let me tell you, it is powerful. It's powerful. It works. So we're going to post that information in the notes, and I'll tell you more about these offerings in a future podcast. But today, I want to talk with the two women, the two valiant women who teach alongside with me at the retreats, Lisa Beck and Sherry Snyder. Welcome, gals. Thank you. Thanks, Stace. These women, these partners of mine, are dear friends and longtime followers of Christ and anointed teachers. So with them today, I want to give you the highlights of the captivating retreat, not only to whet your appetite to host one or attend one in your area, but to deeply encourage your heart today. So first, gals, before we get into some specifics of what you teach, part of what you teach, because it's a four-day event, so, you know, <laughs> this is a 30-minute podcast, highlights, but um, what do you love about the Captivating Retreats? Who gets to go first? You, you yeah. do. <laughs> That's Lisa. Um, I love that it's a timeless message. Yes. It's timeless. Yes. So... Yes, we have a lot of film clips. We interject a lot of um, other kinds of encouragement in books and whatever. But God's pursuit of your heart, your freedom yes, um, to partner with him, to dream with him, is timeless. And so there's, there's never going to be... Uh, a bad time to hear this message, mm. to dive deeper. There's always going to be more, mm. a layer of more. Yes. And I love how the the weekend builds, how we start and then 
built yes. towards more to to open our hearts and our minds to to messages that you've heard before but to have time to sit in it mm. and and dream with god yes. i mean when do you ever get to do that right so it's like when i was thinking about what i love about captivating is that it really is captivating on our side, but then to see God's heart towards us, and He finds us captivating mm. in the mess of our lives and in the glory of our lives. Yeah. So powerful. Yes. Mm. I think for me, echoing what Lee said is um, one is the realness of the women, mm, yeah. um, that it's a message where we, we as, a, as, a, as a community of women across the globe are seeking to be authentic and vulnerable about, as Lee said, the messes and what it is to um, engage and encounter a real God, yes. the real Jesus, his real gaze, his real presence with our real hearts, where we are, not where we wish we were or right. where we think we should be, but, but where we are and that God finds us there, that God is pursuing us to find us exactly where we are. And so the just to be, it's so inspiring um, to be around a group of women who are seeking the heart of God to and finding themselves found by Him where they are. It's so inspiring. And um, I, it's countless the number I've attended, and every time I receive, um, I'm drawn into something new in the heart of God, and in His heart for me. It, like Lee said, it just never, it's it's timeless. It never stops saying to me what it has to say. Yeah. So it's just the the real Jesus, incarnate God, real Father, real Holy Spirit, and the real women in in real lives in real stories. It's, it's profound. I was thinking of um, a gritty God, mm -hmm. you know, a yes. God that's in the trenches yes. with us. Jesus. And we don't often get that picture. Yeah, exactly. exactly. When I was a young Christian, or not so young, maybe for the first 20 years of my walk with Christ— um, what was held up to me as an example of a femininity of being a woman that followed Christ, I call now the parade of the perfect. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. And it was unattainable to me. I had, so I had to just shrink back, be quiet, know that I am less than and never will be. And that's just not true. And so what I hear you saying and what I do love about the Captivating Retreat and we hear all of the time is that authenticity. Yes. We, um, we don't have it all together. We are weak and, and he is pursuing us and we are the apple of his eye right now in this moment. So when we get a deeper revelation of how loved we are and who he really is, it changes everything. Yes. It changes everything. Mm. So I think listening to you already, I think it's a draw to what what would be the benefit for women to come mm -hmm. or to 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 watch, to gather a few women together. What do you think? Mm -hmm. So of course, love gathering with what? 400 women yes. anywhere. <laughs> That's just amazing, especially in the worship. Yes. Um, but the accessibility of captivating core mm -hmm. in you being not having to fly, not having to make all the same kind of arrangements you do when you actually leave your state yes. or your city is um is just helpful and i think it makes it way more accessible to people and not as intimidating mm -hmm. to invite people 
into let's just have a weekend. Let's gather yes. with our friends yes. and have a weekend. And it becomes, um, like I've said, five times accessible yes. and cheaper. Uh-huh. Let's just say that. It's cheaper. You have oh, the potential for allies, the potential. So if you're drawing from a geographical area, your neighborhood, your church, then you can walk it out together oh, afterwards. Yes. And that's, from what we've heard, mm-hmm. that's a huge value to be able to just remind each other. <sighs> that's so good. That's so good. Yeah. For me, I think about um, getting some, for some of us, it might be literally feeling and connected, finding our heart for the first time. Oh, and yeah. we just think about the desires of a women's heart, the Stasis first session, and then the larger story, the story of God, who God is, and his epic story, and the invitation to a wild Christianity with this wild, beautiful God. Um, so for some of us, it might be literally finding we have a heart for mm-hmm. the first time. Mm-hmm. For some of us, it might be getting our hearts back after taking assaults that have threatened to shear off everything that God put in into us. And for some of us, it might be we've been walking in it and we just, we get strengthened again and again. Mm-hmm. And there's no end to the strengthening that we need in this hour with each other. And so I think the the connection to our own hearts and then to the heart of God, and then as Lisa said, to allies by getting to do the experience mm-hmm captivating retreat in our own location with our allies. Um, it's it's life-changing. Yes. What, there was something you said that sparked a thought. Oh, fi- finding. So having somebody um, articulate something you've been experiencing in your walk mm-hmm. that you didn't really have the words to Mm. put to it. So I know, like, I was drawn to beauty, you know, drawn to beautiful things and making my home beautiful or being outside, whatever. But also in this, um, what's the word I want for your... Tension. Tension. Thank you. The tension of... um, you know, like I'd been in in the mission field. Yes. So you're you're looking at people who are living in garbage heaps, mm-hmm. and then you come back, and there's a tension about what do I do with this uh. desire for beauty when I know people are barely putting walls on their homes or roofs on their huts, and Having that explained mm. in, see, I'm not explaining no, no, it no, well. No, no, in, in, our, in the core desires, in the in way the that we're core, fashioned. Yes, take that. Yeah. Stacey, it, with it's that. It's exactly what you said. I love that too. And I find that when I'll read a book and somebody names something that's been an yes. experience, but I, I haven't been able to name it. And so it's so beautiful to come together with other women, and we have a shared experience, but to to name it and explore it together, really good. So let me walk you through the first half of the retreat very, very quickly. And we we open together on Thursday night, and there's always, when you gather, there's always a little bit of nervousness, trepidation, even if it's just four people in your home, when you go, I don't know, how's this going to go? Well, you just pray, and Jesus loves to come. So um, our first session together is is just pulling back the curtain on our hearts, on the the beauty of our hearts, the value of our hearts, and the reality that actually it's our hearts that Jesus came to restore, that he hasn't moved heaven and earth again so that we would behave ourselves. We've Mm -hmm. talked about that, but to restore us. And so it's so beautiful to just talk about the dignity that we possess because we are created in the image of God as women. And so that's that's how that's how we kind of like, okay, and we're off to the races. Then the next morning, 
when we're really into it is the retelling of the larger story, which is the gospel in four acts. And it's remembering together, what is this story that God is telling? And as Lisa said, talk about timeless. Yes. To to bask in it, to marinate it, to remember what is it we have been born into? Who is this God? What does he want? Who are we? Has the world been right about me that there is an enemy? Like the, the story, it's an overview that takes our breath away because the gospel always takes our breath away. And then we have a shift because we're going deeper and deeper. And then Lisa shares about a talk that is called Fallen Eve. Can you tell us a little bit about that, please? I can. Oh, good. So in Fallen Eve, we explore the way that the enemy has crept into our giftings, the, the way that we were designed, our personalities, our talents, our bents, if you will, but how the enemy creeps in and takes over things that God meant for glory. So uh, we look at a spectrum from the bully, the overbearing, domineering type woman, all the way down to the desolate woman, the one who shrinks back and placing those particular attributes in God's hands and how they can flourish and not hurt our relationships, not hurt the advancement of the kingdom, but in God's hands and partnering with him become glorious tools for his kingdom and glorious tools for our families, things that have wreaked havoc in our families can be changed and molded and used by him on behalf of good. And you have to start there. You have to start in dealing with those things before you can really move forward. We call for a time of looking at it honestly and handing it over, repenting, and moving forward with what God has. It's powerful. It's good stuff. It's so good. It's good stuff. And what I, one of the things that I love about your teaching, Lisa, is when we're going to pause and we're going to actually, before God, under his gaze of grace, pull back the hiding and look at the ways that we self-protect, that we go to control or, or shrinking back, the ways that we sin, that you do it in such an um, atmosphere of grace and mercy that we can risk being honest about it. You have a sentence about God planned our rescue. Oh, what is your? I love that, um, that God plans our rescue before we even knew we were in trouble. And whether you be in hiding and shame and desolation, or whether you are the controlly, bossy woman that has to be in charge. We kind of um, look at it from all different angles mm -hmm. and allow God to expose what he, he has for you. When we are aware of our failure or we just fell into sinning again in a way that seems to be historic, we, the enemy, is like, just go to shame, just go to shame. But, but that's not what our God is doing. No. And th that is powerful. So it's more than just the exposing. Yes. It's exposing with a path towards more. Yes. With a path towards freedom, with a 
Uh, forgiveness. Yes. Forgiveness. Yes. Yeah. Redemption. That sentence that you say that God planned our rescue before we even knew we were in trouble is mm-hmm. one that I camp out in. Mm-hmm. His intention from the very beginning that he's that in the garden, you know, yes, he's immediately, but I will come for you. It's yes. going to be very different now. You will feel the effects of the fall, but I will come for you. And he does and he has, and it's so beautiful. And yes, we weep, but it's under the eyes of mercy. So, huh, that's just the morning. <laughs> Let's just have an altar call. Oh, right. Let's just do. Yes. We repent. We love you, God. We need you. Um, then we have a, an extended break. The rhythm of the retreats is very spacious. Allow your soul to breathe. Allow you to have time set apart just with God, just with your Father, to hear his voice, to replace what you might hear of the lies of the enemy, to have that exposed, and then to hear the truth of, of who you are and how our God sees you. This, this changes everything. We come back into the afternoon together, and um, I keep changing the name of the session, but <laughs> but the way it begins is just by acknowledging where we've been and and just to say that our sin is not the truest thing about you. The way we fall isn't. And that we have someone, capital S, pursuing us. And what we do, again, under the gaze of mercy and grace, is follow the Holy Spirit to what he would like to surface regarding our wounded hearts, because all of us have been wounded. And and even as you hear that, you just, I can hear like some of you in your hearts going, you don't know the half of it. (laughs) I, I don't know the half of it, but your God does. And he is continually pursuing us with the intention to heal, to restore. It's the Isaiah 61 purpose of his coming, to heal the brokenhearted and to set the captives free. That's us. So we get to pursue him in that way in the afternoon and have him come. And then we have extended time of time just with God or time with prayer, time alone, and he moves on our behalf in a powerful way. We have dinner, we come back, and then Sherry. Stace, one of the um, – something that you guide us to in the wound session is that we have our wounds, and then we have the messages of our wounds. Yes. And then we have the way we respond and organize ourselves around those messages. And that part of um, what we do after dinner on Friday night is – it's called the new name in general. It's really a reflection on identity, and it's um, built – as everything in the retreat is built on what comes before, it's looking at the messages that came with our wound about our identity, um, unworthy, rejectable, unlovable, worthless, orphaned, alone, um, hateful, whatever has come, ugly, repulsive, whatever has come, the messages, the identities that evil sowed through our wounding, and then the Um, our relational context then corroborated because um, we live in a fallen world. And we took those into our hearts that in the new name, we explore um, who God says we are. And um, there's this idea of who has the power to give a woman her name. Mm -hmm. And that um, we go on a treasure hunt, as we often talk the whole retreat, Stace says, is a treasure hunt. The treasure is our heart and the heart of God. So uh, we take a treasure hunt looking and listening to themes in our lives, Um, what we love, what others say and reflect to us about about who we are positively and um, who God says we are above all as his beloved, and especially that that seat of daughterhood, Mm. that seat of um, that we are bone of God's bone and flesh of his flesh, that we are the apple of his eye. We are his family. We are claimed by him um, in his household. And so to receive identity um, at the table of our father in the arms of a father who intended us 
and created us on purpose, exactly how we are. So it's a um, treasure hunt for identity embodied in our names from God. So beautiful. Friends, this is just the first day. <laughs> yes. And I, I want to encourage you. This is an incredible journey and resource, but also this is what is available to us every day of our life. Yes. He is completely, our Jesus is completely about rescuing us, about healing us, and bestowing upon us the faith to believe the truth that we are who he says we are. Yes, God. So may he even do that today. Friends, may he even do that today. I just wanted to give you a little taste about the glory that's available in Christ, about the beauty of these retreats, and um, say, come on, come on. Mm -hmm. You could do it by yourself. You could do it. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, Lisa, would you pray for the listeners today? They are literally all over the world. Mm -hmm. And as you know, they are in different places, struggles, soaring or sinking in their life. Can, would you just pray for them? Father, gracious Father, yes, God. all-knowing God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, would you come, would you come into the places that each woman finds herself right now? Yes, God. God, and you know those places the deep, hidden places of glory, of good that has been squelched and hidden and put in a corner of shame. God, would you come to those places and gently call out the more that you have, yes. the freedom that you have for these women in your love, in your care and guidance, God. I pray that you would call out bravery mm. and creativity, that you would call out dreams that you would like to see come to fruition in partnering with these women. Mm. God, I can just imagine all the different facets of your love touching such a variety and amazing assembly of talents and gifts and glory. So God, we are releasing your love your sacrifice over these women. And I pray that their cores in their future, God, as attendees or as leaders, that they would say, yes, I will partner with you, God. I will see what you have. I will take that step. We release love God over it mm. and through it. Yes, Lord. We thank you. God, we thank you for technology used in a beautiful way to reach women right where they are. Yes, God. Cher, sure, could you add to that, please? Just a, a blessing mm -hmm. over the listeners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sisters, we bless you. We bless you with a fresh revelation today of the affection of Jesus, the affection of Jesus for you, the love of our Father and his brightness and his sparkling countenance, his bright face turned toward you, and the commitment of Holy Spirit to be with you where you are, to be with you um, in the depths of the sinking, and to be with you in the heights of the soaring, mm -hmm. and to be with you in the process of, of our restoration, mm. every breath and every step, we release over you. We bless you with hope. Oh, yes, God. We bless you with a, um, a 
the flaming up of your fiery spirit inside of you that says, I will not go quietly into the night. I will stand on the strength and solidarity of my sister's um, invitation and in the um, trust of Jesus, a redeeming, rescuing king. So we declare hope and um, determination and fierceness and a reviving of the flame of love within you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. And I want to acknowledge that some of you listening are men, and you are <laughs> so welcome here. <laughs> You're so welcome. And we're talking about Captivating Core, but as you may know, there is the Wild at Heart Basic that is available online as well. I want to close again with the Song of Songs. My beloved spoke and said to me, Arise, my darling, my beautiful one. Come away with me. Dear ones, the most valuable thing you can offer your world flows from your secret life with God. He's the source of your life, and investing time with Him, developing a rhythm spent with Him is the very best investment you can make. He's our life, our breath, our hope, our everything, and He loves spending time with you. Why not spend a few more minutes now when we close and stay with him in quiet reflection, prayer, resting in his presence? Friends, you are loved, and he loves being with you, you who have captivated Jesus' heart. So bless you. Till next time. 